In this video, we'll talk about how we can integrate uh, caching in Spring Boot using caffeine in memory cache. And we'll also look at what caching is, why do you need, ca why do you need a cache and how can uh, a cache actually uh, uh, speed up or uh, increase the performance of your application through various approaches. So uh, before we move on to uh, how to implement a cache and looking at an example, let's talk about what caching is. So this uh, blog post by AWS on caching is a really, really nice starting point to understand how caching works. So uh, please check it out and I'll have a link in the description as well. So in computing, a cache is a high speed data storage layer, uh, which stores a subset of data, uh, typically transient in nature, uh, short lived, uh, so that the future requests of that data are served up faster than it is possible maximum data's primary storage location. So uh, what does this mean? So uh, let's say that you have a very uh, expensive data object in your database. Uh, which uh, when you fetch it from the database, uh, it takes a lot of time. So what you can do is you can use a cache where uh, you only fetch that uh, expensive object once, keep it in the cache and uh, in the future requests, the data will be served through the cache and not by the database. Uh, and the cache is in memory, so it'll be really, really fast to actually get that uh, expensive object from your to your application. So how does caching work? Uh, the data in a cache is generally stored uh, in a fast access hardware such as RAM and may also be used in correlation with the software component. Uh, the primary purpose of a cache is to increase data retrieval performance. So this is very important. Uh, to increase data retrieval performance by reducing the need to access the underlying slower storage layer. So in our example where we had uh, an expensive object inside our database, uh, our slower storage layer would be the database and we use an in-memory cache to actually increase the data retrieval performance. Now, uh, the next thing which you need to know is the benefits of caching. So we have an improved application, uh, application performance, reduced database cost. So this is what we'll be uh, looking at. Reduce the load on the backend, uh, increase throughput, eliminate database hotspots and play to performance. So when you use a uh, cache inside your application, uh, whether it uh, be to cache the application, cache the load balancing, cache the database, you will see a very nice increase in your performance and scalability. And of course, this also depends on different factors of your application and also the kind of configurations you have with your application. So uh, now uh, let's actually look at how we can uh, implement an in-memory cache in Spring Boot using Caffeine. And uh, if you want a really thorough example, then please go through this blog post uh, where they explain how you can uh, implement a cache in a REST API. But uh, we'll be looking, looking at a very, very, very uh, simple example, a sort of uh, a hello world of, you know, uh, caching using uh, Spring Boot and Caffeine. So let's jump into that. So yeah, uh, before uh, we start uh, uh, going to the example, uh, you definitely need these two dependencies in your application. Which one is Caffeine. And the other is the Spring Boot Starter Cache dependency. Okay, so here I have a very simple application which uses a cache uh, and we'll go through this application, uh, run the application and see uh, how the cache is being implemented here. So uh, if you want to know how to uh, write the code to implement uh, a cache for your uh, 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 application, then uh, there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube where you can actually see how to implement it. Uh, this one deals with understanding the cache and how the configuration and how uh, the system works in Spring Boot. Uh, yeah. And we'll be using the caffeine cache as an example here. So uh, first uh, we need to configure our cache and add it to our cache manager by Spring Boot. So this is what this uh, code does or config file does. Here we have a, a caffeine uh, which we are building. The initial capacity is going to be 100. Maximum size can be 500. Uh, the element in the cache expires after access in 10 minutes. So uh, if it's been more than 10 minutes since the last time the cache, uh, the limit to the cache was accessed, then it uh, automatically expires. And you have the record starts method, uh, which basically uh, gives you the statistics of your cache. Uh, for example, the eviction count, the hit count, etc., etc. So this is how a configuration for your cache config works. The next thing which you need to do uh, is two things. First, we need to enable caching for our application. Uh, tell Spring Boot that we will be actually uh, you know, using uh, a caching mechanism inside our application. 
and the second thing is uh, pointing to which method will we be caching and we have to tell Spring Boot that. So let's see how uh, we do that in the application. So uh, you can, uh, Spring Boot has an annotation called as enable caching which you can add to your application or even to your configuration file and this tells Spring Boot that uh, please look at uh, all the dependencies that uh, uh, involve caching in the class path and use the ones which you specify. So we have specified the caffeine cache here. So we'll be using that and searching for uh, caffeine uh, dependency in the class path. So we have that in our POM. Let's just look at that here. Yep, we have it right here. So this is how we tell Spring Boot that, yeah, we want uh, to enable caching for our application. The next thing which we need to do is tell Spring Boot which method to be cached. So here I have an example service, which uh, basically gets you a string uh, and it tries to simulate an expensive DB fetch or database fetch and return the string back. So you can uh, think of this as an example where uh, we are fetching a really expensive object from the database and then returning it, returning it back to the user. Now, uh, since this is going to be expensive, uh, we add a cacheable annotation on top of it. And now uh, every time we access this method, the return value will be added to a cache. And this cache is in the form of a uh, hash map or hash table, which has a key value pair. And it and the value inside your cache is going to be uh, the return value here, which is going to be a string. The last thing which you need to know is cache config, which is basically uh, the name of the cache which you want to use. So if you see the uh, config here, we are using an example cache, which is the name of our cache. And we just point out to Spring Boot that you know, this is where we actually want to use example cache. So now uh, when we actually test our application, we will see that uh, this line of code will only be uh, seen once because uh, once we fetch it from the database, it will be inserted into the cache and then we will only be uh, getting this result uh, without actually you know going through uh, the DB calls inside this uh, hypothetical method. So now let's see our actual method where we try this out. So we have uh, auto wire or uh, injected our example service. Uh, we start the caffeine cache testing process. We call the get string method. And since it's the first time, there is no hit to the cache. Uh, this is a terminology where we use uh, for caching. Uh, when we actually access the cache, it's a hit. Uh, when we don't access the cache, then it's a mess. And when the element is removed from the cache, it's called eviction. So first time, uh, the first time when we do this, it will actually hit our database and this will be printed out. So the subsequent times um, here, uh, we have a hit. So this piece of code will not be shown again. So let's see how this works and uh, we can run it here. And we are looking for this to not be there inside our application should be the only ones. So let's do it here. And as you can see, we have the simulating uh, log only once and subsequent times we just call the expensive string inside our function. So this is how you implement a very simple introduction on how a caffeine cache works in Spring Boot and how you can actually uh, run this code and uh, figure out how to use caffeine cache or a cache inside your own application. Uh, so that is all for this video. Um, uh, the code for this example will be in the link in the description of the GitHub repo. Uh, you can definitely check it out. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.